Attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, good morning to our audience. Uh, today's webinar was planned to help attendees gain a better understanding of the features and functions of Oracle Tax Reporting Cloud Service. It is hosted by Deborah O'Connell, uh, Principal Solutions Manager, and Mike Pilch, Director, uh, both from Edgewater Ranzell. Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Great. Good morning, and thank you for joining. Today, we'll, I'll spend some time talking about Tax Reporting Cloud Service, also known as TRCS, and Deborah will provide a short demo of the capabilities of the application. Next slide, please. So I think, and, and I think many tax professionals that are on the webinar today would probably agree, a large misconception of tax is the single calculation for the provision each reporting period is the only responsibility that tax professionals have. Something that's calculable and fairly standard. However, the provision <clears throat> is one of several reporting period requirements as well as other ad hoc problems and items that need to be addressed over the course of the year. Tax court, the tax department deals with many reporting requirements, including the country by country reporting, as well as footnotes for multiple county bases, regulatory requests, and also street of decisions. There are many complexities due to the new tax code or legislation. Tracking and understanding the changes uh, for those estimates or performers to provide a C-suite with understanding of what the impact might be. And that's followed up with obviously the implementation of any kind of new changes or standards. There are obviously new reporting requirements that are coming out. The FASD is rolling out issues, new issues each day, including the most recent yesterday there was, the new insurance standard. Not always, but many times, these changes create tax differences and complexities that need to be evaluated and understood. <clears throat> There's plenty of scrutiny within the tax bureaus and agencies as well that the tax department has to handle regarding the return, Transfer pricing, apportionment, or other analysis that's required. But many times this is done in Excel, which creates risks and problems with a, being able to trace and understand the complexities of the issue. Many times those Excel workbooks include macros, complex formulas, or calculations, and it becomes difficult to manage and maintain without utilizing consultants. <clears throat> with all of this, what ifs and issues, tight deadlines are difficult to meet and often are missed. Next slide, please. The common model, which, which I'm including as Excel, includes data from various sources, many ERPs, consolidation tools such as FCCS or HFM, and tax, uh, tax packages that include granularity that you wouldn't necessarily see in the ERP or within normal uh, tax solutions. It's transactional type data. It could also include one-off items that happen at the end of the year or end of the quarter that have not been found a permanent harm within your ERP or within your consolidation tool or even your tax reporting package. <clears throat> it can also include non-templatized or standardized reports or collections that come from various reporting offices into the whole consolidated uh, provision or reporting process. It's often found to be included with hidden rows and columns or cells that were whited out, making the FCC or other component analysis a significant manual effort as well as the analysis that's needed to provide the provision and reporting requirements each period. I've seen nine financial data entered into, or nine final financial data entered into the provision process, which also creates complexities and errors. The lack of security, uniformity, and automation is one other issue that comes up to mind. <clears throat> but there's also when multiple members are trying to work within a single file, it becomes a bottleneck when there's issues with sharing the file. It's difficult to itemize workflow and checklists of where you are in the progress utilizing Excel, and as a workflow within TRCS. <clears throat> Again, when you're dealing with all these complexities and these issues, it's difficult to meet the timeline to meet the quarter, quarterly reporting requirements as well as the annual process. Next slide, please. So there's, there's value in the solution of TRCS. And the value is that it drives confidence. It meets the challenging reporting requirements for multi-jurisdictional reporting and multi-accounting basis reporting. It provides transparency with drillback and visual aids to provide an understanding of risk mitigation or a fuel point for where you are in the process. It reduces costs because it is flexible and it's able to adapt the changes to provide value reports for the audit process as well as checks and balances and the transparency to understand source data to drill back. It also increases automation with a collaborative <clears throat> environment where finance and tax can work together, provides a workflow to understand the percentage completion or bottlenecks within the provision process or reporting process, 
as well as any kind of risk or, or reporting requirement processes. Additionally, it provides audit flags and calculations to provide insight so that management can make decisions as necessary. Finally, it provides pre-built reporting that we've customized for your reporting requirements. Obviously, there's many industries, there's many different requirements within those industries, or even with management teams to understand the data or, or, the, or the output. So there's opportunity here to enhance the tax experience with dashboards and additional analysis as well. Next slide, please. As I mentioned, TRSS is an out-of-the-box solution to meet the provision reporting needs. It's not just the provision process. With the capabilities of workflow, tax work papers, dashboard and reporting provision, TRCS offers an improved tax process, finding several challenges into a single solution. While it is built in the Oracle's Financial Consolidation Cloud Service, also known as FCCS, and integrates with this, this is not a requirement for implementing TRCS. As I mentioned, TRCS has the capability to integrate with many sources to collect the appropriate level of data for the provision and reporting processes. For those not familiar with SmartView, it's an add-on to Excel and has the touch and feel to pull data and review, while Financial Reports is the tool for standardizing reports. It both includes this capability. Next slide, please. So to provide a quick view of the on-prem solutions that Oracle offered versus the cloud solution, Hyperion Tax Division, also known as HDP, was for the tax division process as well as some country-by-country -country reporting and the process control. Hyperion Tax Governance, HTG, <clears throat> was for workflow and tax work papers, and FDMEE, Financial Data Management, which, which is for integrating data to the NT application. So previously, you'd have to buy the three solutions in order to get the complexity and, and opportunity with a solution of TRCS. So this gives you a brief overview of the offering between on-prem versus cloud. Next slide, please. Now, going back to the tax revision process, within TRCS, it offers a controllable environment, something that's efficient to create automation and is audible because you're able to trace back and understand where the data is coming from and how the data is sourced to your application. So basically, a, a source destination approach. It also templatizes your approach. It, it, it helps various tax department professionals input data in a standardized approach so that individuals are not working with, with individual Excel files to bring into a consolidated approach for the tax provision process. Like I said, the automation is the calculation of temp firm differences as well as other tax components that might be specific to your industry or might be specific to what your company is doing on a 1F transaction or within any kind of merger or other transactional need. Again, it's, it's built for more multi-jurisdictional and, and reporting uh, standards. Gap and IFRS are noted, but it can be functional for other uh, reporting bases. And of course, it's scale of future growth. So as the company moves and company changes, it's able to scale to that and create an opportunity for future uh, review of tax needs, but also maintain that historical integrity to not change any of your roll forwards or any of your calculations that you had in the previous periods. So the automation of tax account roll forward is obviously critical to understand what your beginning balance is, the components of that beginning balance, and understand how you, you came to that amount. Now, going back to the multiple jurisdiction reporting standards as well, that will help to understand any kind of uh, gap to stat differences or any kind of uh, multi-jurisdictional reconciliations that might be needed. <clears throat> Next slide, please. <clears throat> Within the tax work papers, you're able to understand the details of what you're trying to provide into your provision process. So it might be your NOLs, it could be your FTC, your VAT, anything that's specifically at a detailed level that you're, you're housing today with an Excel model that you're driving into your provision process. You can build into the application to house it all in a single solution and be able to drill back and understand where that data came from. Additionally, you're able to report off this and understand <clears throat> the complexity and the, and the needs of those uh, items within your, your full provision process. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now again, drill back capability, something that's really critical for your audit approach and dealing with your auditors or dealing with any kind of requests from regulators or even the IRS. So it allows you the opportunity to drill back into the solution and understand where the data is coming from, the source, uh, to itemize it, to understand how that rolls up into your full provision process, which ultimately rolls into your, your return. So your RTA, as well as the critical area to understand how those differences impact the RTA or RTP, whichever way you um, acronym it. <clears throat> and it also can be used to track the uh, uncertain tax provisions, R&D, uh, or any other similar transaction like I mentioned. Next slide, please. 
Now with data management, you're able to see where the data comes from, see the source to application, source to the application, and also look at it from a standpoint of understanding what your FIN 18 from your estimated tax rate or anything that you need to layer in from a discrete perspective. So you're able to see the source of those changes, the source, the impact from the FIN 18 reconciliation, anything from your ETR that you're working through, as well as understand your legal entity structure. So if you have a lower set of data that rolls up to a jurisdictional legal entity view within your ERP or, or your EPM solution, you will see that approach within data management. It gives you the view and understanding of how the pieces roll up to one. So you're able to reconcile back and understand between the different solutions or different applications you have, how they report up. It also shows your reporting standards being your accounting bases, whether it's GAP, STAT, IFRS, et cetera. It gives you an understanding of how that reconciles out. And again, it, it gives you an idea of your tax types, such as your regional, national. It could go down state, cantonal, cantonal, or federal, but it could go down to a different level than that if you needed. Next slide, please. Now the reporting, like I mentioned, the out-of-box solution offers reporting to meet the needs for the provision in, this, in the country-by-country -country reporting. Now that, that reporting is out of the box, but you can also customize it as needed to meet the needs of your management or any kind of uh, reports that you need for your specific um, field points. So the options are within SmartView as well as financial reports and dashboards. And dashboards really give you an idea of uh, a, a visual aid to see where you are in the process. Also to see you know, how your provision looks from your, your source uh, of, the, of the estimated amount due. Uh, you also be able to customize, like I said, and also meet any of the needs for interactive reports and drill downs. Next slide, please. Now, the country-by-country -country reporting, that's obviously an issue for some organizations, not all at this point. It's templatized. It's able to bring in uh, data from various applications and solutions. It's a way to see the data in a standardized approach and control the environment to make sure that as data is submit being submitted in, it's being submitted in a standardized approach. So you're not working with various reports from various uh, jurisdictions or individuals who have put together the data in, in different formats. It's pre-built to meet the requir these requirements. Next slide, please. Now, again, going back to the dashboards, it's pre-built and configurable. There's out-of-the-box KPIs, but obviously you can build in your own KPIs as necessary. And also your own reports to give you that steel point. Now, I think one of the things that's good in this is that the idea around the risk mitigation understand if there's too much revenue in one location, uh, but not enough employees to support those financial statements. So it gives you an idea if you need to move the revenue uh, to the appropriately align to ensure that you aren't running into a situation where you're going to receive the questions from the authorities <clears throat> or the agencies. And it also gives you a feel point for where you are in the process to understand your workflow, understand uh, if there's any bottlenecks or any kind of issues that you're running into in your provision process. It also gives you an idea of who submitted uh, and, and where you can continue to focus your effort at that point in time. Next slide, please. Now with workflow. Workflow is another area where it gives you an idea of where the process might have a bottleneck, where the process needs to be uh, maybe put a little more pressure on. Maybe, maybe it gives you an idea of <clears throat> uh, what maybe needs additional resources. So it offers the opportunity to look at the complete tax process from whether it's month end, year end, or quarter end, doesn't matter. It could also look at the tax return filing process where you are in that return uh, preparation, or also controversy management, dealing with anything from an, an audit standpoint, understanding you know, what the deadlines are for reporting to that authority, uh, the deadlines for any kind of comments you need or any kind of details you need in that process. Additionally, it could set up a, a workflow for transfer pricing. Since that's an annual review, you can set up the review to understand when you will have that due and what the due dates are along the process uh, or any other deliverables that you might have. Now, again, this is audible. It provides segregation of duties and it's transparent calculations to get you, give you an understanding of where that's coming from, how this is all being calculated. And for the dashboard side, it provides an opportunity for you to see that in more of a, a prettier approach, something that's more visual and be, is able to distribute to others within the organization to give them an idea. Next slide, please. Now we're going to okay. move on to the demonstration. All right, thanks, Mike. Thanks, so I will um, take this away. Um, we're going to log in. We have 15 minutes, so um, I'm just going to say if you want a longer demo, this is going to be a quick tour. We're happy to um, spend time, um, you know, contact Joey, contact your salesperson, 
and we'll give you a more thorough demo, but this is just to give you a flavor. So I'm gonna log in as two different people. The first one is Maria, she's responsible for overseeing the tax, and then Barry, who's more of a preparer. But I'm just gonna try and give you a quick tour of flavor of TRCS. So I've logged into my browser, this is TRCS. If you're looking kind of with squiggly, squinty eyes, looks exactly like um, FCCS because it's built on the FCCS platform. It looks very similar to EPPCS and just this standardized, um, simplified interface that all of the Oracle Cloud products are looking at I, or look like. Um, with that, you have the Learning Academy. So if I want to look at some online help and short training videos, I have that um, Oracle's constantly updating them. Um, one of the things to point out is that because these products can all talk to each other, I pulled in some artifacts from FCCS so I have an income dashboard and operating expense dashboard. I have my long range forecast from EPBCS. So my tax users can just come to one place and see everything that they need to see in here. Um, they don't have to log into FCCS or EPBCS to get additional information. Everything is really streamlined right into here, um, which makes it much easier for them to do their jobs. Um, a lot of these cards are set up automatically um, as part of TRCS, there's all this pre configured content, um, but I can um, enrich it and modify it as well. So this kind of similar to FCCS, I have this concept of a closed management piece, a flipboard. I have an announcement up here saying uh, my deadlines are critical. I have my um, open tasks that I can look at to see what I'm supposed to be working on. Um, as an administrator, I have access to see what everybody is supposed to be doing. But if I wanna just look and see what tasks I have to do, I can click on the little person and it's gonna just show me what I'm responsible for. So up here at the top, I have an alert just saying, telling me there's a variance. Um, the good thing here is this is trying to get out of the business of lots of emails and phone calls. The idea is that um, if there is something pressing, everybody can kind of see and socialize it, comment on it right within the system and so that you would know that I'm working on it. Um, this is something open with the approver, which means since it's showing up in my queue, it's something that I have to approve. This is to review my tax automation. If I look over here at my workflow, I can kind of see um, who was working on this before. I can have certification questions. So this is my um, workflow. I can have certification questions. I can put informational instructions in here. Again, having everything right within the system so that users can look at it and see it. Um, I just want to show you um, one of the things in here. This is all of the different settings that my um, person that's working for me would set up. This is a really cool one though. This is a tax automation. So this is where we're setting up those rules for the entire system. Um, I, a lot of these are gonna come pre-configured out of the box and then you can add whichever ones you need. This is for my current provision for period 12. I have all these different accounts and rules. I can enable or disable them as I want. I can use different types of logic so I can either pull in the data, squeeze the difference to come up with the amount, or I can um, look at the movements for it, look at a percentage. So maybe for meals and entertainments, I'm pulling from my meals and entertainment accounts. I'm a certain amount and saying that only 50% of that can go into my current provision. I set up all of that within this um, nice interface. I can load this up as well if I want to. I set this up for my current, my deferred, really um, nice and easy, a lot better than having to write lots of um, VB script rules, anything like that. Um, so I can look at those, my do domicile rules, I can do ones for individual entities, um, lots of good stuff in there. So after I've reviewed that as a manager, I can then go ahead and approve it and reject it and then everybody knows that I've kind of signed off on it. Um, lots of other closed management type tasks that I have listed in here. I can put in links to um, my tax account reconciliations. So if I'm hopefully using account reconciliation closed service, I can go in and have that automatically launch a window, uh, window there. My transfer pricing, lots of different entries I can go ahead and um, do in here. I'm gonna review my footnote to disclosures though. So this is a link into my reports. For those of you familiar with the Oracle products, this is the same report writer that we use um, for on-premise and for the cloud. So there's no learning curve there. These can also be rendered within, um, pull them up through SmartView. This is a total provision for taxes report I'm gonna look at it. 
Um, I'm going to set my point of view. Now, I'm going to run this in HTML, so it's interactive, but this could just as easily be run in a PDF form or in a PDF or um, sent over to Excel. So this is a report showing me my total provision. Um, I have different sections of it, so my net income, my provision for taxes, and my deferred taxes. What I've done here to make it easier for my users, and actually, to tell you the truth, this came from um, Oracle. This is one of the pre-built artifacts that comes with the system, so I wouldn't even necessarily have to set this up. But if I want to look at this, I can go ahead and look at my provision for taxes. I can look into um, what's been put in for North America, and automatically, just by clicking on that, it's going to launch another report. This is a report that's a consolidating report, so I start at Total North America, and it's automatically going to show me the details of this. Um, the nice thing here, too, is if I add another entity in North America, I don't have to go back and update my reports. It's going to automatically happen, you know, just very different from Excel, right? Um, so this is my consolidating provision. I can expand any of these numbers as well. So if I want to look at my um, permanent differences, I actually don't have anything showing up in there. If I look at um, my net income before tax, I can click on any of these. So if I want to click on um, North America, Again, it's going to bring me to yet another report. So again, instead of having to kind of try and figure out how I want to drill into my data, this navigation flow has been set up for me so that I can look at all these details. So now this is going to show me, I can look at this by different currencies if I want to. My parent currency, I'm in actually US dollar one, so it's going to be the same. But if I were in Europe and I wanted to look at different entity currencies, I could do that. So this is my automated. So this is those rules that we set up, this is where those automated calculations are going to come in. So it's going to show me what the system has automatically calculated, and then any adjustments to it to come up with the total. I can change my point of, point of view right from here as well if I want to. So it's giving me a lot of transparency, a lot of detail right, um, right within my report just by kind of drilling through. If I go back to my main report. I can look at deferred in a similar way. So if I want to maybe drill into my corporate, for my deferred, you're going to see, because it's corporate, it's not a consolidating report, but this is actually pulling up something else where I have um, my summary. This is by all of my different entities within the region, um, so I can expand those. I have the roll forward of how my, my deferred taxes are being set up, so my opening balance rolling into my closing balance. Again, this is pre-configured. Um, all of these members are set up within the dimension, and then I can add to them as I need to. So this is showing me my calculated return to accrual. So this is where my accrual adjustments are automatically being calculated. I have a lot of other detail over here. A um, couple other cool ones to point out, my impact for my change in tax rates. So it's automatically going to calculate if um, my um, individual tax rates within a particular jurisdiction have changed. It'll calculate that. Um, the net benefit of region. So I'm looking at a federal report. So this is showing the benefit of deducting my state taxes. I could do um, based on what I'm looking at that would change accordingly. I can calculate automatically my um, movements from FX. So when I have to disclose that, I have that there. And then I can just look at other features here. So right within from that one report where we started our investigation, I can drill into lots of other areas. The last area, just to show you in here, too, is my consolidated effective tax rate. So if I open this up, I can look at my ETR, and I can see um, my taxes calculated for each entity. And then if I click on one of these, I can then go in, pull up another report. This is similar to one of the other reports that we've looked at already, but this is showing me for that particular entity just how, they're, um, how everything's being calculated, so the pre-tax the tax effect, and then the percentages. So lots and lots of detail, this nice navigation flow. Um, again, if something changes in the database, everything is automatically updated. I'm not going to have to go back in and do um, any kind of recalculations or anything like that. Um, so it's really nice. Let me close out of this report. Um, I could certainly approve that after I've looked at it, but I'm going to just close it for now. Um, just to give you a sense of the entire closed calendar, um, for those of you familiar with FCCS, you'll see this is a new screen. This came out in August where we have um, the entire close within the standardized simplified interface now, which means if I was looking at this on my phone, it would look 
like this very pretty, very crisp, I know pretty is a technical term. I can click right here and change this to a Gantt chart view. So this looks more like a project plan so I can see everything that has to get done. And then if I click on any of these tasks, I can open it up and look at it. This is very secure, so I'm the administrator, so I have rights for everything, but if I had users who did not have the rights to do everything, they wouldn't be able to. A um, Couple other things to show you, you, supplemental data. So this is a really important part of calculating your um, tax provision, is coming up with all this additional detail that the auditors are gonna want, um, regulators are gonna wanna see it. So this is a way of collecting and compiling the data within the system, with the workflow, with tight rules, et cetera. So this is a tax credit form. You can see this is relational data. So this is text and phone numbers and dates and all of that good stuff. And I, can, I have these already set up so that I can populate them accordingly. So again, instead of having tons of Excel spreadsheets that people are sending around and trying to compile them, this is doing it um, within the system. And then with supplemental data analysis, I can go ahead and export all of that and, um, and look at the data or write reports on it to report on it. So lots of good stuff in here. Um, one last thing to show you in here, I wanna show you just some of those dashboards. I think that um, Mike had some screenshots of them in his deck, but if we look at a compliance dashboard, it's gonna bring it up and show us just, um, I only have two users in this app, but um, it's gonna show just the status of the close. So again, this isn't somebody keeping track on a whiteboard. This is right within the system. So I can see um, everything that's been done, what's been approved, prepared, et cetera. And I can also look at this and try and figure out who's consistently late with, um, with their jobs. So I have, um, according to my clock, I have three minutes left. So I'm gonna log in quickly. I just wanna show you what it looks like from a preparer's point of view. So I can do all of this, I'm not gonna show it today. All of these forms and everything that I've been showing you can be opened up in SmartView, the whole close process, supplemental data, all of that can be um, pulled into SmartView. And just like with FCCS and EPBCS, now you can do all of the metadata maintenance within SmartView as well. So it's really nice, it's a cool feature. Um, I log in as Barry now. Now he has kind of different cards. He has less tasks that are open for him. Um, these are just coming from EPBCS. He doesn't need to look at FCCS. Um, the same operations dashboard, but if he opens up the operations dashboard, it's only gonna show his stuff. I just wanna focus for a minute on one of these um, sets of forms. Again, we have lots and lots of them, but this is a form for um, calculating the current provision um, and for making adjustments to it. So if I wanna look at this form, this is uh, my automated column, again, is my column of what's automatically being calculated by um, the system. If I wanna put in any types of adjustments here, maybe a top side adjustment or um, a transfer pricing adjustment, let's say I need to do that kind of adjustment. As soon as I type it in, it's gonna say it's um, yellow, showing that it's changed. I can put in a, column, um, a comment here. Sorry, I can put in a comment. Okay, let me save it first. But I can put in the adjustment. As soon as I save it, everything is gonna um, recalculate here. I thought I saved it. Okay, sorry about that, I'm clicking too fast. And so as soon as I save it, it's gonna um, calculate it, it's gonna um, roll on down. And then if I wanna go in and just see, um, the change history, for example, this is auditable. So it's saying that um, Barry, the old value was um, empty, the new value is a thousand. So I can see where this happened. And then I can put in comments if I want to. There we go. And typical typos for me. So now it's telling me who um, made that comment. Whoops. Okay, so this is just a current provision one. I can go ahead maybe and look and see if um, other people have put in comments in here. Um, they would show up and I can see the audit history for everyone else. So again, this is just um, one of the forms. This data could also be loaded up from another source if you had it there. This is for my temporary differences. So kind of the same idea um, where I have my different columns for my um, automated and my um, manual adjustments. I, in here, that one is blue, so I can see that somebody already put in a comment about the capitalized software. 
and it's just based on a new ruling. So I can really use this very schedule driven. These schedules come from Oracle with TRCS. I don't have to set them all up, but I can enrich them with the accounts that I want to. Um, just one other thing to show you in here is I have these kinds of dashboards as well where I can look at um, my statutory rate versus the effective tax rate. So this is just for um, US, but I can look at it for any of my jurisdictions. I can look at different forms. I can run reports in here. Lots and lots of functionality. Very tough to show off all of it in 15 minutes. Um, and I'm speaking incredibly fast, so I apologize for that. But um, just um, a quick tour of TRCS. And again, if you want to see more details, um, have other questions, please reach out to us. And we're happy to spend a lot more time um, going through it. With that, I'm going to send it back to Joey, if you had any closing remarks. Um, thank you so much, Deborah. Uh, thank you both uh, to Deborah and Mike uh, for uh, such a, a comprehensive presentation. Um, I know it's a lot of information to, uh, to fit into 30 minutes, but you guys did a great job. Um, email any questions to info at ranzel.com and we will provide a response. Um, I know we had uh, a couple questions come through uh, the queue. Um, that we can respond to uh, via an email. So uh, don't think that you're being ignored. Um, a recording of this webinar will also be available on our website where you may also find a number of previous webinars posted. We hope you gained insight from today's webinar. Please visit our website to learn about and register for upcoming webinars and follow us on social media to get alerts about upcoming events, training, and webinars. Thank you to our audience for joining us today, and thank you to both uh, Deborah and Mike once again for sharing your knowledge and expertise during this presentation. This concludes today's webinar.